All right, everybody. We're going to do a little I'll Fly Away country style. Is the uh, live stream ready and up and running? Oh, All right, yeah. good. Good morning, everybody. Can I get a little more vocal in my monitor, please? My vocal? Just a little bit. So right, sing along with us. Some bright morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to that home on God's celestial shore. around here. It is nice to see you this morning. If you have never been here before, you may not realize that you are here on the first Sunday of the month. You may have figured that out, but it is Family Worship Sunday, which means the kids stay in a little bit more. They lead us in some of the worship. If you're at home, special welcome to you, and you can, you can join in too um, at home. So we always start with the kids leading us in prayer. Is it Finn? Oh, Rosie is our first. Pr Rosie's going to come up and lead us in prayer. <laughs> Go, Rosie! Hello, my name is Rosie. Please pray off me. Dear God, Thank you for Family Sunday. Thank you for Pastor Doug. Thank you for this touch. Thank you for loving. Thank you for kitty cats and dogs. Amen. 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 Good morning, Crossroads. Good morning to those that are watching online. <laughs> My name is Finn. If you are visiting this morning in person or online, we, we would like to give you a special welcome. We are grateful that you are joining us this morning. Hey, everyone. My name is Shannon Warway, and I am the children's leader here at Crossroads. And Finn and I have a few announcements for you. High school and 20-somethings meet tomorrow at 7 at Pastor Field's house. The annual meeting is today, right after the service, and we hope you can all attend. The meeting is open to anyone who'd like to be here, member or not. Also, on Tuesday, please join us for a prayer. Uh, this is Tuesday, February 21st, for a prayer pizza pop patisserie party. Woo! To celebrate the prayer ministry, pizza will be served at 6 p.m. with the celebration starting at 7. Also, all are welcome to attend. A fun family event is coming up. The Winter Carnival, it will be on Saturday, February 25th. 
from one, two, three. This is not a drop-off event. Adults stay with the kids. Volunteers are needed to assist with the games. Sign up at the children's ministry table. Ice cream will be served. It is our hope that you'll know what's going on around here and, and the many ways that you can plug in as you like. Here are some of the ways you can learn about the happenings and events at Crossroads, the website, the weekly email, our welcome table located in the hallway, or our Facebook page. Now please stand and call us and join us in our call to worship. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Woo! All right. So in the call to worship, you all have a phrase that you got to say back. Okay. And not that we're competitive around here, but it's me versus you. So I think I can be louder than all of you. And, uh, but, but we'll find out if that's true. All right, so give me the next slide. Your response is, happy are we. Give it a try. Happy are we. When we remember that we need God. Happy are we. When we feel sorry for all the bad stuff we do and see. Happy are we. When we seek God's way and not our way. Happy are we. When we remember how much we are loved by God. Happy are we. Let's lift our voices and praise God. And I think you need some kids up yeah, here, Yeah, right? probably should have planned that ahead a little bit because we need to get them up here and arrange them. So can you just talk and pontificate I can keep talking on wise things? All right, all kids, come on up here. Over kids, here on this up. side. All, all, on this side. You're going over there where the uh, mics are. Up you go. <laughs> Ella's like, I'm not a kid. Brett, come on. You're like... <laughs> middle school for crying out loud <laughs> now she's like thanks for pointing me out <laughs> all right is that all the that's all the kids who i know if you're a kid and you want to stay is there any more kids cool don <laughs> said kids loose you want to go up actually we can take a couple of you up A little bit farther. Get really close to each other. You guys remember Jesus loved me? Who was back there last week and was saying Jesus loved me? I'm going to stand behind you and get you started, but you guys remember it? Oh, good. Okay, they are ready. Don't they look great? They're going to sound great, too. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. So you guys, how about we do it? This was Miss Sherry's suggestion. I thought it was pretty cool. You guys are going to sing it once, and then they're going to sing it to you guys. And then we're all going to sing it together. How about that? Yeah. Okay? You want to listen to them too? Yeah. yeah? All right, good. All right, you ready? You guys are going to go first. Jesus loves me, yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. All right, you can grab a seat. All right, well, as we, as we take our offering, we'll always take a moment to reflect on the words of Scripture. And today, we read these words that are very simple. They come to us from a guy by the name of Paul. He says this, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. And, you know, when we do the annual meeting that means we get to do the fun stuff 
of looking at church finances and looking at the budget. Yay. But every year I'm blown away by the faithfulness of this community because the work that this church does in this community just keeps going forward and forward and forward, and that's because of your guys' faithfulness. So we thank you for your faithfulness, and we want this to be a place of freedom, so feel no obligation to participate in this part of the service. We are glad that you're here, whether you're here in person or here online. If you do uh, want to participate, we're going to pass the baskets, and the baskets will start in front. Shannon and Finn I got it under control. They're going to, and then they'll collect them in the back. So when it gets to you, just keep it rolling, and they'll collect them in the back. The other thing I want to tell you about quickly is coming up in May, we're going to be doing our second annual Community Care 5K, which is a fundraiser here um, in South Lyon. It raises money for Renewed Hope Counseling Center, Capernaum Health Clinic, and Active Faith Community Services, which is our food bank in town and our clothing uh, closet in town. So if you want to be a part of that, that'd be fantastic. Families. there were fa If your family, where's the families who were at the 5K last year? Raise your hand. Right? Like that, it was a really cool family time where f just the whole family came out. Kids did the 5K. Uh, the parents did the 5K. It was great. So think of that as a nice family event. It's just right, right through town. All right, we also use this as a time of prayer to pray uh, what's, for what's going on in our community. One person I'd ask you to pray for uh, this upcoming week is Aaron. Now, Aaron, everybody turn, look at the camera, and say, hi, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> okay. Um, Aaron is one of our people who stays connected to our church family online, and she is starting um, it's chemo this week, right? chemo and radiation this week. So please keep uh, Aaron in your prayers. That would be fantastic. And then the other person I'd ask you to pray for, is, he's in the room, and we're going to ask him to come out up here, is Josh. And Josh is headed off to basic training. It looks like he already got the haircut. Um, and he is, he's going to be joining uh, the Air Force. And so we just want to pray for him and keep him in our prayers. And so let's... Uh, Let's just, and pray for his mom too. And if you're sitting next to his mom, you could put a hand, a comfort on her shoulder right over there. So if you guys want to, let's get more than one hand on. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for Erin, for the woman that she is in this current battle that she has, Lord, just give her your peace that surpasses all understanding. Let her feel your love and your grace and your goodness. And we just pray for all the doctors and the nurses. We thank you for all the time they have devoted to their studies. Let them be agents of your healing and let them bring healing all over her body. So touch her with your healing touch. Fill her with your spirit. Guide her as she goes uh, through these treatments. And we thank you for Josh. We thank you for the man that he is and the man he's continuing to become. Let him feel your love. Let him go with you. Let him go with your grace for those moments where it feels ridiculous and hard. Surround him with your love. Fill him with your peace. Fill him with your courage and guide him and lead him. We love him and we just thank you for him and we turn him over to your care. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Now God's people said, amen. 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 Thanks, man. All right, uh, somebody who's got the list, what do we got next? If Gabe's up next with the Bible reading, next we have the Bible reading from Gabe. Come on up. Good morning. My name is Gabe. I'm going to read you Philippians 4.13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. The Bible point for today is God is stronger than those who are against us. Okay. I, you know, in our, uh, in our prayer time, we maybe needed to pray for 
the factory that puts together our communion cups because uh, they're still on back order. So we aren't going to be doing, um, we aren't going to get a chance to do a communion today, which means we're going right to the mystery box. Is that right? Miss Kelly, we're going right to the mystery box next. Okay. If you've never seen the mystery box or understand how the mystery box works, it's this. The Bible point for today is, say it again, Gabe. Look on your paper. <laughs> God is stronger than those who are against us. God is stronger than those who are against us. Now, there is something, Aaron, you put something in this box. Okay, Aaron has put something in this box. And when I open it up, I have to figure out a way to connect what's in the box to today's Bible point, which is, say it with me, God is stronger than those who are against us. All right, but I can't, but, but it's never a competition, except for it always is. All right, so Shannon is going to come on up, and Shannon's going to get her crew. So it's me against the kids in coming up with Connecting Arian's thing to today's Bible points. Do you want to get your team, Ms. Shannon? Uh, all the hands that are up. You got Aiden's hand up over here. And Aiden over here. Yeah. All right, is that good? Yeah. All right. You got a good solid team. All right, do on your laps, do drum roll, please. What do we got, Arian? Oh. <laughs> His dad's like, his dad's like, wait a minute, did I tell you you could take that out of the house? <laughs> All right, I, okay, a lot of times, for those of you who haven't seen this before, I have no clue what I pull out of the box and the kids have to tell me what's up. But I actually know that this is how you control a video game. Yes? All right, what, what game does it go to? Um, everything on my PS4. Everything on the PS4 and it has buttons and controllers and this thing and so somehow we have to connect this to today's Bible point, which is stronger than those who are against us. I'm glad you guys remembered. All right, <laughs> here we go. So now, here's how you guys participate. Uh, who wants to, you want, who, you want to start the Jeopardy song with the doo doos? Well, just do, just do a cappella. You don't need to. <laughs> do, do, do. Joe, or are you uh, needing more time? <laughs> Shannon's still going. Shannon's still going. Four people to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> needs to come up and whistle it. She's pretty good. <laughs> doing it? You can, come on up, Aiden. Come on up. All right, tell us what you think. God controls everything. Oh. Um. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> You're like, and? <laughs> All right, wait, wait. All right, so here's the thing. It, I, got, I got to age myself here. So actually, I'm pre-video games. So when I was a kid growing up, we didn't have video. We, went, we would go up and we would play at, to the arcade and play pinball. We didn't play video games. But one of the first video games that came out that I did get to play was, do you want to guess? Pac-Man, right? And in Pac-Man, you have a path. And you have to use your controller to stay on the path. And if you stay on the path and you keep going forward, the little guy, you never blow up and you win the game. So if we stay on the path and go forward, we don't. Ellie, you're already shaking your head no, and I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think we're ready for the vote, and I think I'm going to lose. All right. All those, I'm going to look right at you, Ellie. All those who think I win today say, ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. See, that's how you got to do it. All, all those, all those who think the kids won today, say, "Oh yeah!" Oh yeah! Ah, the kids win once again. <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, Aaron. Take the box, and I think your dad wants that. <laughs> What's that? The mystery box goes back to, so the mystery box goes all the way back to when we were meeting in the middle school. Um, so it's like 17 years old. Like there's kids, like where's Emma? I saw Emma come in. On the left. <laughs> so Emma came in, like, do you, do you remember what you put in the box? A dog treat? You put maybe one time. One time you put your Barbies in there. Um, anyways, Emma's like, you know, graduated from, well, she's in college. She's, you know, adult woman now. So anyways, it's been around for a while. So you guys hear that? When you're adults, you keep coming. That's kind of the concept we're working <laughs> on. All right. So <laughs> thanks, Emma, for being today's uh, Bible point. And you too, Josh. You keep coming and you're an adult. All right. So. Kids, are you ready to go back and have some fun with the one and only Shannon? <laughs> go get her. She's at the back door. Well, she's right there, but Michaela's at the back door. Double Michaela at the back door. All right. You guys ready to continue our time of worship? Let's rise. Let's lift our voices and praise our God. All right. How about we just do a little, I know, uh, we already prayed for the service, but let's pray for our worship time. Just get us into a worshipful space. All right, Heavenly Father, I, just, I thank you so much for the gift of the children and just that they can help lead us to you, just the childlike innocence that they have. And I just pray that we could have some of that, some of that innocence that's just totally dependent on you and that we don't try to live life without you um, because we do need you. In your name we pray, amen. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one.
my song will rise to you when temptation comes my way but I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay oh, oh, oh. Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need I love you, Lord. Your mercy never failed me all my days. Been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the good. Goodness. 
Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for the opportunity to worship together with the children of the church. And now we continue on in our time of worship by taking a look at your wisdom and your way, your holy words. And that's all I want us to hear this morning, your wisdom and your way. So if my words get in the way, just let them go away so only your light would shine in this time and place. In Jesus' holy name we pray and all God's people said, amen. 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 You can grab a seat. Uh, sixth through ninth grade, you got the one and only... Uh, Michaela at the uh, back door. She is ready for you. So, you know, youth sports is a big deal in our society. It's a big deal in a lot of our lives. And one of the things I had, I used to just have a ton of fun, was being a hockey coach. I used to love to coach hockey and love to coach little kids in hockey, and we always had a blast. And you know, if you do youth sports uh, with your kids, they can just be this all-encompassing thing, right, where you're, you know, like on the weekends you're out of town and you're doing stuff. So I remember I was coaching this team. We were over in hockey, right? So you're in a tournament. Where do you got to go? Canada, right? So we're over in Canada. We're in London, Ontario, and we've got this big tournament, and we get into town, and what do you do when you're the coach? You head to the rink, and you scout the other teams. You see what you got coming as you go through, uh, as you go through your tournament. So I remember Friday night, showing up at the rink, looking at some of the teams, playing our game, and then figuring out how are we going to compete against this one team in particular. And so I had to come up, right? I had to get, my, I had to get the, the kids fired up because this team, this team was tough. So I worked up my pregame speech, walked into the locker room before the game. I'm like, all right, here's the deal. They're bigger than we are. They're faster than we are. They're more skilled than we are. They hit harder than we do. I know. I should have been a motivational speaker. <laughs> All right. And then I said, but everybody's afraid of them and you watch them play, and the other teams just back off, and they can do whatever you want. They can do whatever they want. If you skate right up to them and get in their face, I don't care if you end up on your butt, but if you skate right up to them and take away, every hockey coach likes to say time and space. You take away time and space, they won't know what to do. So the game comes, and, and the kids followed the plan. They just, they, their guy had the puck, and our guy was just right on top of him. And usually, our guy was the one who got knocked down, but it didn't matter. Because the, the other kid didn't know what to do, so he made a bad pass, and we would intercept or whatever, and we ended up winning the game. So, yeah, it was, it was a good game. <laughs> we, we didn't win the tournament because when we got like 
the kids put everything they had into that game. So the next game came along and like they had nothing left in the tank. But that was okay because that game, they played their hearts out and they followed the plan. And sometimes I had to go and you know, what are you, what are we trying to do in youth sports? Yes, it's about the sports, but it's a lot about teaching life lessons. So there were times I would have to go into, I would have to go into the locker room after a game and say, okay, look at the board. What were the three things I asked you to do in this game? I said, that's our game plan for this team. Then I'd say, did you do the first one? They'd say, oh yeah, we did that. Did you do the second one? Yep. Did you do the third one? Yep. Okay. You gave it your best. You followed the plan. Results, result. Don't worry about it, right? Because you just you're called to the process. You're called to faithfulness. The key is, you got to know the game plan. And so we start a new series on probably the most famous sermon of all time called the Sermon on the Mount, and we're gonna. We're going to dive into this thing now, all of February, all of March, and we're not finishing up until Easter morning. So we're going to just really dive and learn this because this is the game plan. So here's what I suggest you do this week is open up to Matthew chapter 5 and just read chapters 5, 6, and 7. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That contains the entirety of the Sermon on the Mount, but the Sermon on the Mount is the game plan. And now here's, we're going to talk more about this at the annual meeting, but we're taking now, you know, we've done the prayer ministry now for one year, and so now as we head into year two, we're going to, we're adding one, well, we're adding a couple of pieces, okay? Piece number one for the families in the room. You know how your kids walk out and you say, what did they learn? And they say, I don't know. And you ask, you push a little and they say, I don't know, Jesus, okay? You're gonna have the Bible point. You'll have Shannon's Bible point will be on the prayer thing. So you'll always know. Now today, you know it because you said it. I made you say it four or five times. But on the average Sunday, you won't. The other thing that we're gonna put in there is a prayer prompt that you can use while you're driving to your youth sports events or you're sitting around the dinner table it, it'll prompt you on how to have prayer with your kids. So that's now in the prayer thing. The second thing is there is going to be now sermon follow-up devotional. You can use it on your own. You can use it in, on, in your prayer group. You can, you know, I know, like I know on Tuesday, if you go to the women's group, the women's group is going to be using that devotional, that follow-up. Right? Okay. So you got to know the plan. So stick with us over the next couple of months as we really dive in to the Sermon on the Mount and we really understand what it is. Okay? So here's the thing. John Stott, pretty, pretty good theologian, says it this way. The Sermon on the Mount is probably the best known part of the teaching of Jesus, though arguably it is the least understood. And certainly, it is the least obeyed. It's the nearest thing to a manifesto that he ever uttered, for it is his own description of what he wanted his followers to be and to do. He's telling us who we're called to be in this time, in this place. But now there comes a problem. The problem is we're human beings. And as human beings, one of the things we really like to do is argue. And so one of the ways people argue, people in church and biblical scholars argue about the Sermon on the Mount, some of them say, well, it's impossible, and you're never going to be able to, to live up to that. And besides, he's giving us a description of what heaven will be like. Just read it and be encouraged for the future. Other people say, you yeah, know, <laughs> this is how you're supposed to live your life. The position that we take as a church family, that I take as uh, one of the pastors here who's supposed to do the teaching, is that we're supposed to live it. 
you're going to molten in another, you know, big time uh, theologian says it like this. Anyone who considers the Sermon on the Mount to be impossible of fulfillment mocks God. For God is the creator and lover of life, and he gives no commandments that cannot be fulfilled. Anyone who considers that the Sermon on the Mount is fulfillable only in the sentiments of the heart, you can think like that, but not in public action, says that Jesus is wrong. For he preached a sermon precisely in order that it might be put into practice. Anyone who considers that is fulfillable only for himself personally, but not in the context of his responsibility for other people, does not know God the creator. Anyone finally who believes that only one person, Jesus himself, was able to fulfill the Sermon on the Mount, whereas everyone else is bound to fail in the attempt, thus to become a manifest sinner, is stifling the truth of the community of Christ. I know it's a big, long, it's a mouthful, but look is stifling the truth of the community of Christ. Let's talk about the game plan for a second. If I'm out there on my own, yeah, I cannot, I cannot live in a way consistent with what Jesus is going to lay out to us over the next two months. I mean, it only took him like 15 minutes. It's going to take us two months. But again, we're not him, okay? But if I I try to do it without all of you in my life, without us getting together and praying with each other, without us getting together and encouraging each other, I will fail. I guarantee it. Because the plan, a big part of the plan is to do life in community. And as we do life in community, we get strengthened. We get built up. And this is crazy time as we talk about community, right? Because you got all you here, and then there's a whole bunch of people who are at home too, right? But it's all still in the community. Those people who, who show up, right? Like we prayed for Aaron. She's sitting on the other side. She's sitting there right now. She's part of this community. She's part of the prayer of this community. We need each other, right, in that, in that sense. All right, so we're going to let Jesus solve the question of can we do it or can we not do it? Because this is how he ends the sermon. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Watch and puts them into practice. Jesus finishes his sermon by telling us, put this into practice. Live this way. Here's the game plan. All right? So let's back up, and let's set it up. It starts in chapter 5, verse 3. Verses 1 and 2 is just a little setup. Then Jesus dives in at at three, at verse three. But if we go back to chapter four, we kind of get the setup for the whole thing. And, And we get the initial game plan. The initial game plan is this. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent, the kingdom is here. It's near. It's now. Repent. What is this repent? What does he mean when he says repent? Repent is like a total, a total shift in our lives. It's a total refocusing of our lives. It's me saying, I've tried it my way, or I've tried all these ways that I think are good and are right, And now I'm going to try 
God's way. And now I'm going to try it Jesus' way. And that's where my focus is going to be. And that's where my movement's going to be. That's where I'm going to go. I'm always moving towards Jesus day by day. I, when, and, and, and please hear this. Too often in the church, we set it up like this is a one-time thing that you do. Yes. Okay, yes, get it started. But I have to do it every day. And I've been following Jesus for a really, really long time, basically as long as I can remember. And every day, I have to be a person of repentance. Every day, I have to say, I have a choice today, and my choice is to follow Jesus Christ in this time, in this place, in this space. So that's repent. So now we come to the Sermon on the Mount and, and how we live this plan. So I scouted the other team. And I know how, they, I know how they're going to get us. First thing they're going to do is they're going to get us suspicious of each other. They're going to get us scapegoating each other. They're going to get us trying to figure out who the problem is. And they will convince us we're not the problem. So now we split up into another group and another group and another group and another group. The last count, I believe there's like 2,500 plus Christian denominations. 2,500 plus Christian denominations. Now, when we're in our separate camps and we're all split apart, that scapegoating process will continue. You're the prom, you're the prom, you're the prom. And I'm convinced I'm never the prom. Works well for me. Until though now I'm out on my own, by myself, and I'm real easy to pick off. So then I fall to whatever my, you know, addiction is, my, whatever my struggle is. I fall to that. Then, then the evil one wants to tell me what a worthless human being I am and how I could never be lovable. And so there I am, out on my own, not supported in community, by myself, same wins. Happens all the time. That's the game plan. That's how the evil, however you want to lay it out. You want to say the evil one, you want to just say evil, you want to say Satan, which means our hostile opponent. That's the strategy. And we walk into that strategy willingly all the time. So how does, how does Jesus start it, right? Bless you. It's how he starts. Actually, it is how he starts. Because the first word is, blessed are you. <laughs> A sneeze brought to you today by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, as we talk about this plan thing, the, some of you are going to know this quote, right? How did, the, how did the, bo the great boxer Mike Tyson say it? Everybody has a plan until, until you get punched in the face. In the mouth, face, mouth, right? Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face or the mouth. You know what Mike forgot? You know who has a plan for that? Christians. You know where that plan is found? The Sermon on the Mount. Because what happens when we get punched in the face? You turn the other cheek. 
And I, well, <laughs> then you plan your funeral. <laughs> if you're at home, he said, unless it's Mike Tyson, you won't be alive to turn the other cheek. All right. So, but you'll be in glory. So that's good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so here we go with Matthew 5, 1 through 5. And we got to set the scene. So now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. And he said, blessed, yes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now here's the key word, blessed. And it's a tough word. Because it doesn't mean, in scriptural terms, what we think it means. Sometimes it gets translated as happy, which is why when we did our call to worship today, I had us say, happy are we. Right? Blessed are we, but neither blessed or happy totally get at what's going on here in this word. So, again, we'll, we'll let the scholars help us out, Okay. Neither blessed nor happy adequately translates makarios, which is rather a term of congratulations and recommendation. Watch. This is a little odd way. You know, we always have our odd way of saying things, right? But like you do something or somebody does something, and what do, and what do people now say? They say, good on you which again, it's kind of clunk clunky, but, but good on you actually kind of gets at what's going on here. Good on you is like, hey, you're living the way you're supposed to live, right? Good on you. You're doing it right. You're living the way God wants you to live. So that's, that's closer to this to this word here, right? Because these are, qualities are to be envied and emulated. They make up the good life. This is what the good life looks like. And here's why happy and blessed let us down. Because when we think of happy, we think of you know all sorts of material goods, or I got everything I want, right? And the social psychologists have done all the, they've been studying happiness for years. It turns out, shocker, it's not money. I mean, you have to have enough so that you're not worried about the basics like, can I eat and do I have a roof over my head? But once you get past that point, the correlation, the relationship between uh, money and happiness is gone. It has way more to do with relationship and community and friendship. Oh. Maybe that's why the game plan of the other team is to split us up. But if we can be together, if we can be one, we can be in community. Right? That's, that's where the joy is. That's where the good life is. The rewards are at the level of spiritual experience and relationship with God rather than of material enrichment. You're blessed good on you because you're living the way God wants you to live. And that's where you find happiness. So here they go. So those blessed are, it starts with, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When we argue about this one, we, the, the biblical scholars, which pastors gets pulled into because those are all the people we read, right? This becomes another one. Well, they're talking about poverty. You're not supposed to want to be poor, so don't, that's not really, okay. Here's how we break that one apart, okay? When you read the Beatitudes in Luke's gospel, it just says, blessed are the poor. And in Luke's gospel, the point Jesus is making there is, I'm for the poor. I'm on your side. And I'm going, and, and things will change. If it doesn't change in this world, it'll change in the world to come. I got you. But in Matthew's gospel, 
He doesn't say blessed are the poor. He says it differently. He says blessed are the poor in spirit. Jesus is making a different point here. So which one do we do? Well, when we're reading Luke, we read blessed are the poor. When we read Matthew, we read blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. To be poor in spirit, is to recognize our incredible need for God. It's for me to recognize that without God in my life, I can be picked off. I will not win the race. I will not, because the other team, let's face it, is kind of, right? Evil in this world is big and scary. But we get in evil's face by recognizing our need for God. By not letting shame throw us off, right? Off all by ourselves. I, I love the 12 step programs because. When the people show up, what, how, how do they start? I'm Joe, and, and, and here's what I'm struggling with. See how that just kills the shame? The shame wants that to be your little secret. You couldn't tell anybody that. You couldn't say, I'm an alcoholic. You couldn't say, I struggle with drugs. You couldn't say, I'm addicted to stuff. I just can't stop myself from that. You couldn't say that. Because the evil one wants you to have shame. Get off by yourself. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who recognize their incredible need for God and aren't afraid to admit it to anybody. Because they're going to get a checklist of all the things that they have to do so they can get better in life. Is that what it says? It says the exact opposite. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There's no, that's it. When you recognize your need for God, God says, welcome. That's it. No checklist. Jesus plus nothing. Right? You just say, I need you. Jesus says, I know. Come on. <laughs> right? Come on, welcome, welcome. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's how it starts. I think about how crazy this is. You want a job. Does it start with that? No, it starts with your resume. Starts with proving yourself. Starts with showing the world how you're all that in a bag of chips. Not with Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit. God loves you right the way you are right this second. Doesn't need you to go through the checklist to earn that love. He's got you. The evil one doesn't want you to know that. Doesn't want you to experience that love, that acceptance. Stay in your shame. You're right. Nobody's as bad as you. Whoa. If you want to check if that's true, just look to your left, look to your right. We're all in this together, guys, right? <laughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay? We recognize our poverty. That's where it starts. We don't hide it. We're not ashamed of it because we recognize, wait a minute, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Because I got the kingdom of heaven. I got God on my side. I've got the body of Christ. Now, don't miss this part of it. Do not miss this part of it, because this is what we do in our society. I got Christ, and I got Christ's body. That's all of you. I can't do this without all of you. We can't do this without each other. You get Christ, you get the body of Christ. I, I, I got I got it. My, my buddy Elaine goes to Brighton Hospital, and... She leads the devotions 
Brighton Hospital, if you don't know, is Brighton Center for Recovery, people with substance use disorder who are trying to get clean and get on their way right. So in devotion, she always does this thing. I'm stealing it from you. Um, she's like, and it's all, I can't do it as well as Elaine. I didn't ask her to come up here, so I won't right now. But she always does this thing. She's like, here's, if I've got one hand holding God, and I've got another hand holding all of you, Guess what I can't put in my hand? Alcohol, drugs, right? If I'm holding on to you, if I'm holding on to God, and I'm holding on to all you, now I got it. We get Jesus Christ, and we get the body of Christ. That's all of us. So we recognize our poverty. And how do we read it in the book of Revelation, right? This, <laughs> this, is, how, this is how I am. This is how we are as a society. We're always looking for happiness out here. The next thing, the next job, the next relationship, the more, 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 more. And then we, we get it, we think, and then of course it all falls apart, right? You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked, like you, you're, you're putting your, you're, you're putting your hope and your faith in everything but Jesus Christ, in everything but God. And then we wonder why, right, we, we struggle, and we struggle as a society. So first, it starts with recognizing our poverty. Then, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Again, it, it, if we were reading Luke's gospel, it is, it is saying, it's saying, hey, man, if you're sad, okay, you're going to be comforted. If we put it in the context of Matthew's gospel, this means blessed are those who mourn over the condition of things, the condition of their life, the condition of their society. This is where we lament. Lament is that type of prayer where we just are telling God what is. When Jesus is on the cross, he quotes Psalm 22, and he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 22 continues, Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the cries of my groaning. Day after day, I cry out to you, and I'm not getting an answer. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I've scouted the other team, and I know how they want to split us up in this one. If we're going to be a team, we have to learn how to mourn together, and we have to learn how to hear each other's laments. One person laments the, how racism has continued to impact our society. Another person laments that we're still talking about racism. And what we do is we use that to split ourselves apart. Can we hear each other? Can we ask some questions of, of each other? Can we love each other in that space? Or do we have to divide? It's crazy to me. This, hear me out. This is my lament at our society. This is me mourning. It's crazy to me that, that we divide over the laments. That's craziness. You lament something different than I do, so you're on the other team. I can't hear that. Or as soon as you lament and you talk about it, I have to tell you why. No, it's not, it's, no, it's not that bad. It's not blah, blah, blah. Right? What is that about? That's nuts. But you know where I find comfort? In Jesus Christ, who told me, you know how they're going to know you're, you know how you're going to know that you follow by how you love each other. 
and how you care for each other. So that person who laments in a way that's different than me, and my mind immediately goes, whoa, i got to set that person straight. Then I hear Jesus Christ in the back of my mind say, take a deep breath and listen. Take a deep breath, ask another question. Take a deep breath and learn their perspective. You just might learn something. That's my comfort. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. If we're really doing that, then the third one will happen, right? So we recognize our poverty. We lament our condition. We embrace humility. See, when I realize I need God, then it's not me looking down on you, right? I'm, then it's me and you, and we're in the, this whole boat together. When I can lament our condition, this world is a messed up place. Messed up place. And it's been a messed up place for a long time. So one of, my, one, one of my laments is how we lament the good old days. I'm like, I'm, I used to teach history, man. You cannot find the good old days. It's not in the book. <laughs> it's not, OK? <laughs> but I lament that, man. We don't, trust me, we do not, there's no time we want to get back to. But we want to go forward in Jesus Christ. So then I embrace that humility. I need God. I need all of you. Guess what I inherit now? The whole, the whole shebang, right? And I inherit the earth. Now, I didn't get a 60-foot yacht in the deal. Or, or, or uh, is a 60-foot even a yacht? I don't know. <laughs> it's a nice fishing boat, OK. <laughs> I, 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 right? I didn't get you know, a, a condo at Vail and a spot on Miami Beach, right? I got something way better. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and I got his body, my brothers and sisters, my friends to do life with, to support each other. You, you, you can't get better than that. You can't get richer than that. You can't get happier than that. You can't be more blessed than that. So we recognize our poverty, we lament our condition, we embrace our humility, right? We embrace humility. We live as people, and we just started. We're going to get in a few weeks, we'll get to that. What do you do when you get punched in the face? Stay tuned, all right? So here's our call to faith, and I'm going to invite uh, Jen and Matt back up. Even Dave, I'll invite Dave back up too. Um, <laughs> And uh, they're gonna, we're going to go out singing a song which pretty much sums up everything we've been talking about. And then I'm going to ask you to stay seated just for a minute um, so that I can tell you how we'll flip the room for the annual meeting. Okay? So will we follow Jesus' plan for us and live as people of repentance? Live as people who put our faith and our hope and our trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We do it his way. We follow his plan. Will we find that, here, how, you guys ready? Will we find that amazing grace? Amazing grace. <laughs> All right, stand, lift your voices, praise our God. <laughs>
let's go with that, it's that body of Christ who loves God and loves people and actually lives out this call, lives the game plan so that everyone will know the goodness of God in this world. God bless you all. Have a great week.